In this video, I'm going to show you how I do uh, focus stacking. For my focus stacking, I use the Cognosys Stack Shot, which is a contraption sold by a company called Cognosys. Here you're looking at the controller, which controls the mechanical rail that the camera is mounted on. Um, for this particular example, I'm using a Canon R7 with the Canon MPE 65 millimeter 1 to 5x lens with an adapter because it's an EF lens and the uh, EOS R7 is an RF mount. Um, I'm using a total of four lights. I have some old Alien Bs. I have two Alien B 800s on a snoot that has a honeycomb grid at the end so i've got two of the outs and then in the back here i have another alien b 400 for providing rim light and i have another alien b 1600 to just give it a little bit of uh more light and so for today we're going to do um a headshot of this honeybee that i found on the ground dead so the honeybee is got an insect pin through it on a cork and the MP lens itself is difficult to use. So um, what I've done is basically taken everything that I learned in portrait photography of humans and miniaturized it to this scale. So the first thing I have to do is I have to actually see the insect or the small object that I'm photographing and I've really got to bump the ISO just for the purposes of seeing it but obviously I'm not going to take the picture at that high ISO. Um, this is the remote trigger because the lights are connected from this remote so there's four individual receivers to this trigger and what I have already done I've already preset it and I am going to use um, auto distance and I'm going to take pictures spaced at 50 microns um, and I've got a dwell time of about 10 seconds. The dwell time means that the rail or the machine will not fire the next picture until it's rested for 10 seconds so that ensures that there's not going to be any vibrations and in order for this to be very steady I have it mounted on the piece of granite on the workspace that I use in my garage. And then the rail itself is also mounted on a quarter inch thick piece of, of steel. So the way this works is I get my insect into the viewfinder of the camera. And with the controller, I have to find what's called the start position. So you can move the rail backwards and forwards until things come into focus. So what I wanna do here is I wanna move it forward until I can barely see, oops, the front of the antenna in focus. Because what you do in focus stacking is you pick the point that's closest to you and then you pick the point at the farthest end and then it will take pictures within that specified range at the distance that you have the the rail set so here in this um, viewfinder if i do this while holding the phone it's hard so that's about more or less where that front antenna because that's what's closest the front antenna to me so the front antenna is right about there um that's where, I, where, where it's barely in focus. So for this, um, what I do is I pick that as the, the start point. So on the controller, I will pick select and I hit up. And now it's asking me to go to the end position. So I'm going to move the rail forward. And as I move the rail forward, I'm looking for that place where I, I want it to be the end. Um, but it went out of, so I keep going, I keep going, I keep going, I keep going. 
I would say somewhere around there is about the end point of what I want. So then I come back to the controller and I hit up, which will then give me to the next menu. And if I hit up again, then it's going to start taking the pictures. But uh, I can't take the pictures at these particular settings. So I've got to go to a much lower ISO. So I go to what the camera is better for doing these kind of pictures. So I've got it at 1 60th of a second at F5.6. But then... I have to drop my ISO. I gotta drop it down to about 100. But that's still too much light. So the B would be way overexposed if it doesn't have some sort of additional diffusion. So I've got a plexiglass piece here in the back. That will be my white backdrop. And I take this um, plastic dome, which is to a, a light fixture. Except this was made out of plastic, not like the old ones that were made out of glass. And I've cut holes in it that allows me to place it right about here. And it doesn't actually touch, um, doesn't actually, it won't actually touch the, the lens if I put it all the way in there. Okay, so there it is. It looks like it's touching, but it's, it's really not. And then, since I've already had everything set, I simply go and I hit up. And so the camera on the rail slides back. And what it then does is it'll start taking the first series of pictures. So there was the first picture. I took my first picture and I realized I forgot to set the lighting ratio. So I'm not going to explain how I do the lighting ratios because that's just it would be another discussion in itself of how I've learned to do this. But I, I had to do the lighting ratios for all the four lights because the first picture that I took was was overexposed. So here we are again. We're going to run the rail again and it sli slid back to where it needs to and it, it's going to go. So at 50 microns, because that's a very small distance. It's going to take a total of 118 photographs also tells me the time it's going to be 17 minutes and 38 seconds so that's an awful long time and one of the things about a rail like this is that there's no way a human hand can move precisely from the first focal point which i picked the tip of the antenna towards the back of the head in those increments no way so that's why when you take pictures using a um, focusing rail that is controlled by an electronic controller it's going to be very precise so i hope to show you what the final image looks like later we are now at 81 of 181 pictures and what you actually see now is there's a lot more of the animal uh head that you could see because we're about little bit past more I would say more than halfway of all of the images that we're going to use in this stack now that I have all my images selected I take them from um, the SD card or whatever card you have and I use a program called helicon focus to uh, focus stack there's also another program called Xyrene stacker I've never used it and in fact you can even do this in Photoshop but I've never had much luck with Photoshop I just prefer to use Helicon focus. So what you do is you have all of your pictures selected and then it loads them. Um, the first image that you see there was the very first image that I picked where I used the starting point, which was the front antenna that was barely in focus of the honeybee. And so then I use um, method B um, and then I will hit the render button. Now, when I hit the render button, it pops up a second screen and that second screen helicon focus then starts to analyze all of the images going from the very first point to the second point and it starts building a map and of all the pictures that were taken to give me the final resulting image which is pretty impressive because almost everything that i wanted was in focus in fact you can even see the grains of pollen on the bee's head so now it's just a matter of taking this image um, pulling this final image out and making some adjustments 
with um, Photoshop and then I use Topaz Denoise and Topaz Sharpen to make it yet a little bit more sharper to give me a beautiful headshot or portrait of this honeybee.